Manchester United's latest financial results have been released and they make for grim reading. So in this video, I'm going to explain it all to you in as much detail as possible to help you understand them. The fact that United's profits have turned into a loss, the fact that our net debt has gone up by over 100%. And despite all of that, the fact that the Glazers have still taken dividends out of the club, the bastards that they are. I'm going to explain it all in this video. Make sure you drop a like on it if it does help you. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to United People's TV. But let's look at United's latest financial results. Right, let's get into it. And let's start with the revenues. Now, the revenues, as you can see there, they were 509 million. And that's a 118 million pound drop from the previous 12 months. Now, that is a significant drop. And for me, it's a real sign of what's to come in the next, certainly in the year because of COVID-19. Every, every football club in the world, even Chelsea, who managed to spend plenty, every football club in the world is gonna suffer because of the COVID-19 pandemic, just as every single one of us human beings are suffering. So the numbers are gonna to continue to drop, but it's a big sign of what's to come, I think, that drop in revenue. And match day revenue was recorded at 89.8 million and that went down 21 million. And if we're thinking about match day revenue, I genuinely think there's a chance that this season will go on in the Premier League without fans in the stadium. The way COVID-19 is going, you can't put a date on when people and fans will be back in stadiums watching United play. You just, you can't plan for it. So there's every chance we're going to go this entire season. And if we went with a 20 million loss and we didn't have fans since March, imagine what that's going to turn into if we go a whole season without it. It's going to give the Glazers even more reason not to spend money as United's owners. And the broadcasting revenue dropped over 100 million. And that was because of the loss of Champions League and a 14 million pound payment back to broadcasters because of COVID-19. Now, technically, because we're watching so much more on TV, you think the broadcast revenue should go up. But I don't know whether I think United, not United, sorry, the Premier League lost a package with China. I think they're renegotiating all the values of the deals and this crazy £15 pay-per-view deal, which is just fucking disgusting, really. I've no idea what the broadcast revenues are going to be because technically it should go up because it's the only way that we're all watching our teams play now. But I've got no idea. But a £100 million drop, significant. And if you're looking at the most significant numbers in these financial results, it's got to be the loss, the debt and the dividends. Now, the loss, United had a £23.2 million loss for the 12 months up to June the 30th, compared to an £18.9 million profit the previous 12 months. Now, that's a swing of over £42 million, of over 220%. United have operated at a loss over the last 12 months up to June the 30th. And it really goes to explain why United were so hesitant to spend any sort of money in the transfer window. It wasn't a surprise to see it. It was painful to see, especially with other clubs that don't have debt burdened on their club. And that is the problem because look at our debt. It's gone up by over 130 damn percent, up to 474 million pounds. Now, apparently this is down to the fact that we've had a huge drop in the cash reserves of United. That's because of sponsor deals not coming through, the cash not coming in from them, a little bit of expenditure on player buying. But the debt, the fucking debt, the debt is everything at United. Unfortunately, the debt really is everything. When you've got that burdened on United, it's just impossible to go out and spend like, well, it's not impossible to go out and spend like Chelsea, go out and spend like City. But the reality is, is that First and foremost, going into every summer, the debt is what is top of the priority list because of the Glazers owning United, not signing new players. It's as long as that debt is serviced properly and then you can think about signing players second. That's what United have going into every summer, which is why we shouldn't have been surprised about what happened. It was painful to watch what happened, but it wasn't unexpected. And what isn't unexpected either? is dividends. Now, the Glazers are the only Premier League owners to take dividends out of the club. So anybody who comes, ah, oh, look, the Glazers can take money out of it. They own United. 
get fucked. The Glazers have taken so much out of United without taking dividends. They don't need that. Over a billion has gone out on paying their debt back, let alone the dividends. But despite United making a £23 million loss in the 12 months up to June the 30th, the Glazers took £23. £23? The Glazers took £23 million out of the club in that same period in dividends. And there's people saying, ah, the dividends were agreed in, in February. Everything was kicking off already in China. So we already knew what was coming with the pandemic in Europe. So don't use that as an excuse. That's a ridiculous excuse. The fact of the matter is that in the, tw in the last 12 months up to June the 30th, United made a £23 million loss. And in that same time frame, the Glazers took £23 million out of the club. Had they not taken those dividends, we would have operated in a break-even year. But instead, United are sitting at a loss and the Glazers are sitting with £23 million in their fucking pockets. It's just the latest example of a greedy set of owners who really genuinely do not have any intention of getting United back to the top, no matter what bullshit Ed Wither will speak to people about in investor calls. It's just not the truth. The fact of the matter is the numbers do not lie. And the numbers expose the Glazers every single time for what they truly are. Just leeches who use United as nothing more than a cash cow. And I've, I'll tell you what, I've been accused of doing videos about the Glazers during the transfer window because it's trendy. Because it's trendy because, you know, you get on top of it. You can get fucked as well. It's, the Glazers are a cancer on United. Strong way to describe them, but it's just something you want to cut out and get rid of and move and try and beat. But you can't because they own the club and they continue to do what they do. But in the last 12 months, the finances have been hit hard. Every football club and every single human being around the world has been hit hard by what's happened with COVID-19. It hasn't stopped other clubs spending, but the reality is those other clubs do not have the levels of debt that United do. And because of that debt, our priorities are different. And I really genuinely do not expect it to get any better in the next 12 to 24 months because now that the coronavirus has happened around the world and it's really gripped since June, since March, it gives the Glazers another reason not to spend, a bigger reason not to spend that they can, that they can semi justify. So if United didn't spend much this summer, I think the only way that United are going to spend properly in the next couple of years is if we sell players. So, for example, I could see United selling David De Gea and using that money to fund a decent signing. But we've lost David De Gea in the meantime because Henderson's coming through. I think United are planning for that. I think United will not have a massive net spend in the next few transfer windows at the very least because of the coronavirus. This summer was the first of it. But the Glazers, despite all of that, they still took their fucking dividends. And that just shows you how little they truly care about the ambition of the club because the ambition of them is only to line their own pockets. They do not care what United do, whether United are going to win the Premier League or whether we're making any true progress or not. And the only time they'll come in with the money is if we drop out of the Champions League and we lose that revenue stream. Now, that is important to them. So they will come back for that. But all of us, we want to build on that. Solskjaer wants to build on that. I still feel his sacking is inevitable, unless he can work miracles. And I'll tell you what, the response we've seen since that 6-1 to Spurs, it fills me with hope. I'm going to do a video on that coming up soon. But let me know what your reaction is to these latest financial results. For me, it's just another, just another example. I'm not surprised. It's what we expect but it just makes for grim reading. It's just that's what United are. We are a club that's now built to service a debt, not a club that's built to win trophies. And until the Glazers leave, that will never, ever change. I'm bored of it, you're bored of it, but it's the reality and you can't just ignore it and brush it under the carpet because football's back. Fuck the Glazers. Just fuck them.